What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. We're back on the range and today we're going to conduct some science with some bear guns. Let's go get set up and get started. Good enough. So the other day I was on the old tweeter and my good friend Donut tweeted that he was looking for suggestions for a suitable firearm for bear protection. As you can imagine, a lot of people had a lot of different suggestions. And it got me thinking, I have a lot of firearms that could be used for bear protection. So today I've brought out my top five handguns that I would carry for bear protection. We're gonna test out each one and see which one performs the best. I do not have a real bear, but I do have some clear ballistic gel bears and some clear ballistic gel blocks. So we have 64 inches of 10% clear ballistic gel and a clear ballistic gel bear. We're gonna take one shot with each gun and see which one makes it through the most gel. So we're gonna start out with the smallest handgun I brought and work my way up to the biggest. We're gonna start out with a Glock 29. I've decided to keep all the barrel lengths shorter for today's video. I've decided to do that because if you were backpacking or something like that in bear country, you would want a compact version so it wasn't a burden to carry around. The Glock 29 is a semi-automatic 10 millimeter handgun and has a 3.7 inch barrel. The ammo I'm gonna be using is some Underwood ammo 200 grain full metal jackets. All right, here we go. Let's check that out. Okay, so we've got a hit right here on our bear. We gave him a little belly button and it looks like we have a nice straight wound channel and it stops right there, but I don't see a bullet. Okay, so I reviewed the slow-mo footage and turns out um, the bullet's right over here. The 10 millimeter, 200 grain full metal jacket almost made it through all the ballistic gel. It actually peeked out the end here and then shot right back in. Oop, there it is. It's not deformed at all. All right, so with the bear, we're at 68 inches of gel. That's a lot of gel. I have to say, I did not expect the 10 millimeter to go through that much. It's pretty darn impressive. Ugh. <laughs> that gummy bear is not very good, but you know what is good? Subscribing to Kentucky Ballistics. Hit that subscribe button. So the next step up is gonna be 44 Magnum. This is a Smith & Wesson Combat Magnum with a three inch barrel. And I'm gonna be using some Underwood ammo, 44 Magnum, 245 grain full metal jackets. The 10 millimeter went through almost all the gel. So I am guessing the 44 Magnum will probably make it through all of it. Let's have a look. Alrighty, well, it looks like the 44 Magnum did not penetrate as far as the 10 millimeter, but we still made it through quite a bit of gel. Looks like about 45 and a half inches. 
Again, a perfectly non-deformed bullet. So now it's time to step it up to some much bigger handguns. This is a Smith & Wesson 460 Magnum. But this one is special. Smith & Wesson did a limited run of emergency survival bear kits. Inside that kit, there were some survival tools and this big old handgun with a very short barrel that has a two and three quarter inch barrel. And I'm gonna be loading this thing up with some Underwood Ammo 460 Magnum 360 grain hard cast. There is a reason I'm using nothing but full metal jackets and hard cast today. A hollow point is made to prevent over penetration. Today we're going for maximum penetration. That's what she said. <laughs> Now that one kicks. Get out of my ear. Ugh. So it appears the 460 Magnum hard cast almost made it through every single block. When it made it to the last block, it popped out the top. You can see the hole right there. I'm gonna say approximately 65 inches. Do I think it would have made it through all the gel if it wouldn't have popped out the top? most likely, but it did pop out the top, so 65 inches it is. So up next, we are stepping it up to 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum, my personal favorite when it comes to handguns. And this is my absolute favorite 500 Magnum. This is the twin brother to the 460 Magnum Emergency Survival Edition. This is the 500 Magnum emergency survival edition with a two and three quarter inch barrel. And I'm gonna be loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 500 Magnum, 500 grain hard cast. Get this big guy loaded up. This is gonna be a little snappy. <laughs> so we had a good hit. And I gotta find our wound channel here. That's 44 mag. So it looks like our wound channel goes through every single block and then right out the back. So as of now, the 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum has taken the lead. The last gun we're using today is one that you haven't seen in a while. This is a Magnum Research BFR chambered in 4570. And what makes this special is it's the snub nose edition with a three inch barrel. The ammo I'm gonna be using is Underwood ammo. This is 4570 plus P, 430 grain hard cast. So this is single action. So you open your little door there, load your round in, spin it around. You're ready to rock and roll. Okay, here we go. Better hang on to this sucker. Something interesting about this snub nose is normally there is an ejector rod, but because that barrel is so short, they can't put one on the gun. So you just have a rod. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at our gel. Oh, wow. Okay. So see this little mark right here? That wasn't there before. It came out the side. <laughs> So, we're at about 66 and a half. Also, take a look at this, the 4570. That barrel is so short, it doesn't have enough dwell time to burn off all the powder. So you got all this powder spray on our bear here. Here's what I recommend if you ever encounter a bear. You put it in a headlock and you just, just Huh? <laughs> All right, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about these bear guns. 
out of the five guns that we used today, if I was looking for something that was small, compact, and not going to weigh too much when I'm trucking around the woods, I would go with the Glock 29 10 millimeter. It still packed a heck of a punch and almost made it through all the gel. Now, if I was going to pick raw power and penetration, I'm going with the 500 Magnum. That thing delivered a ton of energy and still made it through all the gel in a perfectly straight line. I mean, that thing is probably still going. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Out of the five guns that we used today, which one was your favorite and which one would you carry for bear protection? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed today's video as much as I did, do me a favor and give it a like. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure and check me out on Kentucky Customs, Kentucky Ballistics Shorts, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below, along with a link to KentuckyBallistics.com just in case you want to pick up a shirt. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics. I'll see you next time.